Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I am going to give it just a few minutes just to see who arrives to join us live. I'm excited to be back. I'm definitely feeling all the new term vibes as well with September. I know some people are feeling like everything is a bit disorganized. The kids have gone back. I'm a bit all over the place. But overwhelmingly, I'm seeing lots of enthusiastic people really committing, want to get things sorted, want to hit those goals for the end of the year. What is it I need to do right now to make that happen? So what I thought I would do to come back and connect with all of you in here, let me know if you're watching live, drop me a little comment. Um, what I thought I would do this morning is introduce you to two of my favorite people that help me out in the Just Start Now membership. So if you are a member, you get access each month to these two amazing humans. Firstly, it's Lee Tierney. She is a magic copywriter. And what happens is each month, every fortnight, we have a thread up in our group. And um, you as a member can submit anything that you're working on, any written word, um, where you can um, get Lee's feedback on it, her professional advice on how to make it more impactful, more connecting with your audience, saying what you really want it to say. And then what also happens in the membership is that you get access to um, Louise Magement, who will be joining us at half past, and she helps with all things tech. So primarily, I always encourage you to talk to her about getting your mailing list set up, because I think that's really important if you're operating primarily online and you want to have your own database of people to reach, because we can't rely on social media. Um, so we will talk to her, because I know these two things copywriting, getting the words right, and tech, oh my God, the tech, are two big scary things that people find really get in their way. Morning, guys. So with this operation with StreamYard, I can't see who you are unless you click on the link in the description on this box. So if you just go up to the description on this live chat, you will see it says, I'm using StreamYard. Click here to give me permission. And then I'll be able to see who your names are. Because at the moment, it just says Facebook users. And I don't know who you are. But morning. Hi. I'm really glad you are here. So what I'm going to do then for the first half now is get Lee up and just ask her a few questions about the art of copywriting. If you have any questions about writing the written word, how to have more impact with what you say and the things you put out on social media or your blogs or your website, please pop them in the chat and Lee and I will just answer them as we go. Otherwise, um, we're just going to have a little chat. I've got a few questions for Lee um, to help you. So let's get her in now. Lovely. Good morning, Lee. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm good, thanks. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I feel all warm and fuzzy, amazing human and magical. Oh. Yeah. I know you commented on that when I shared on LinkedIn that I was doing this as well. Lucy, nice to see you. Yes, I see you now. Thank you for clicking on the link. Um, yes, you said that on LinkedIn, didn't you? I think actually, do you know what, Lee? This is interesting for us to start off with. I took some of those words from your website. So <laughs> words that I was using to describe you, because I think you have quite brilliantly on your website a description. And I thought I want to make sure I'm using the words that Lee uses to describe herself. And so I used a few of them, you know, like using that, that word around magic and, you know, connecting with people and and helping people make sure they are having that impact and that great conversation that I know you're really passionate about with their customers. So yeah, I was using your words and now you feel warm and fuzzy because I've done that. And actually <laughs> a lot of good copywriting a little bit, isn't it? Like that, that we can do that. Yours. I love that. I love that you did that. Um, yes, I think that's one of the key things about consistency, isn't it? And ha using the same words across places so that people start to associate those words with you, um, which is obviously a, a really lovely thing to have in your business. People see the word magical and go, oh, yeah, that's them. That's it. That's how I know who I associate that with. And for me, with Just Start Now, actually, that a lot of people have said that's lodged in their brains and that's yeah. stuck with them and that's an attitude that they want to have. And actually, for me, going on to something slightly different, it's something I've actually now trademarked so that I oh. actually own the trademark for that, which is very exciting. Oh, yeah. That is exciting. I didn't know you'd done that. No, it's, it's so official. You get like this document with these kind of crests at the top and everything. It's very exciting. Anyway. Congratulations. Thank you. We're getting That's a great started. story. 
<laughs> what I thought I wanted to start off with is the question about what are the advantages of having really good copy in your business? Like, why do we need to care about writing really well or choosing the right words in our business? What would you say the advantages are? So I think I kind of summarised it as three C's for the purpose of this chat this morning. And I'm going to call them chemistry, credibility and confidence. Mm -hmm. um, chemistry wise, obviously, as humans, we're drawn to great stories. Um, and it's how we connect. And that used to be around the campfire telling, you know, oral stories. Now it's via the internet, via websites and email newsletters and that sort of thing. So using the written word to tell your business story helps you make that connection um, and have those conversations um, in this new realm of digital storytelling that we're all now in. Um, and it will help you attract your ideal clients to you, help you be of service to them and form that lasting bond with them. And then credibility wise, your ideal clients will see from the get go that you know what you're what they need. Yeah, you truly see them. And that great copy will clearly show that your offerings have been created with them in mind, rather than to serve you. Um, yeah. And that you're you're being genuine and authentic, which is, you know, again really important to us as humans making a human to human connection so great copy is you know it's not magical but it kind of is in that way um and then confidence wise as a business owner nearly every business owner says oh, i want to feel confident in my business um and having great copy gives you that confidence because you will feel like you can easily talk about your business the right people are drawn to you and that gross bit of making the sale is just so much easier it's effortless because you've already done the work up front of being really clear and authentic and actually telling people what that you've got what they need so yeah I put it down to chemistry credibility and confidence love it there's so many things to touch on there and I do I totally agree I think the, the confidence piece and it's really interesting when you help people and I help people with the words that they're using to describe themselves to describe their services that they're particularly with their websites and things those permanent things they get up there the level of confidence they then have to go out and tell people about those things is just game changing whereas otherwise they're they're hiding, aren't they? And yeah. kind of, oh, well, I've got this thing, but I'm a bit, like, I'm not sure if the, the sales page says enough or I've got this website, but I don't really want you to go to it. Whereas yeah. suddenly you turn into this different person if the words there really feel you and feel authentic and, oh my God, so important what you said, that it's actually all about the customer. It's actually not about you. It's about them, the person reading, so they can see themselves in the words that you're using. Hey, you've nicked my line for later. <laughs> we will harp on about that a lot, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it's not about you, it's about the customer, isn't it? And that's yeah. so important with the words and the language. Yeah. Yeah. This is it will take the pressure off, though. It completely lifts a weight when you're doing that. What should I be saying? What can I say? Am I going to sound stupid if I say that? Well, no, because you're talking to a person and for a person and that just completely I think changes everything yeah I agree when people when clients or members come to me and or I hear them say I don't know what to say I don't know what to write about I, you know I'm staring at my my Instagram caption I know I have to post something today and I don't know what to write think about the ideal customer what do they need to hear from you what is it what tip would they need what little lift would they need what what would make them laugh and smile today you know think about them it's not about you it's not about you showing off or being clever or being the smartest person on their feed that day it's about saying what they need and you're right like it just comes from a much nicer place if you can yeah. focus on them instead yeah definitely this is interesting. I was going to say that Lucy's just written. Do you think copywriting is being ridden over by video content now? Because we're all like, there's a lot more focus, isn't there, with all of these platforms moving towards video content like this instead of the written form? Like, what are your thoughts on that? And, and how does that um, come into your work? That's interesting because you can't actually have video without w words anyway. Um, so 
you, you will caption your video. So you'll still have words going out with the video. You will script the video to a degree beforehand. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that was one of the things I was going to touch on during our discussion is it's simplifying what you're actually doing. So this copywriting thing sounds like it's, you know, a bit scary and scientific to some people because I'm not a writer and I've never had to do this before. And I get, I completely get that. Um, but really what we're talking about when we're talking about copywriting is having a conversation through the written word. So, um, yeah, I get what you're saying, Lucy. Um, but I think there will always be a blend of both um, because obviously people process things in different ways. Um, but, you know, one of the tips that I give to some of my clients that are really struggling with the blank page is actually to go and record themselves talking whatever it is they want to say in a blog post or whatever and then take the notes from that and turn that into the blog post just to simplify things for themselves because some people find it easier to talk to camera yeah but then you can you can repurpose that into something written yeah and I often do that when I'm doing one-to-one -one sessions with people sometimes they can tell me really eloquently in their own voice and then when they yeah. explain to me what it is that their product does or their mm. service does or who they want to help and they describe it and I say that's exactly what you need to write down like that those are the words and then sometimes I'm repeating it back to them and they're going yeah that's exactly it or you've managed to summarize that and I say all I'm doing is just repeating back what you just said a little bit like our conversation at the start of this so it's about actually I think it's about trust isn't it it's trusting yourself trusting that actually you do know who that customer is what they need to hear what their problems are right now how you can connect with them what the language is that's going to really connect and actually believing that you you do have that knowledge and sometimes hearing yourself re recording like that might help you and you know get it down then on paper or screen yeah definitely i agree and of course the the written word is always going to be needed for search engines yes that's the really key bit at the moment whilst the voice recognition stuff is still slowly working its way in at the moment the way that you're getting found is if you write those words in and know what the words are that people are looking for yeah so what would you say are the big mistakes that people make when it comes to copywriting? Where are they stumbling or, or falling down, do you find, when they're trying to sit down and write something for their business? Overcomplicating things. <laughs> <laughs> um, they either get too into the detail of their methodology yeah. and their credentials and that kind of stuff, oh, yes. or they build the act of writing into a much bigger thing than it actually is. As we've already said, it's really about having great conversations with their ideal clients. Um, how would you tell your best friend what you do? It's, it, it really is that simple. Um, a great example I had recently is, you and I have talked about this before, my nan still doesn't understand what I do. And my mum the other day got put on the spot and my nan asked my mum to explain what do I do? <laughs> And my mum told me about this later and I was like, oh, my God, she's got it. She's got it. She's she like, you, he it. you help people write for the Internet for if they want to talk about their businesses. And I was like, yeah. yeah. So how, how, how would you explain your business to your nan, who yeah. probably won't grasp I'm a naturopathic practitioner or I'm a physician, you know, a yeah. personal trainer and all these other things that are going to be new for a lot of people but that they definitely need how how would you explain that approach to someone like your nan yeah I love that I always think that a good lift pitch structure is um you know how people really struggle with and then whatever the problem is that you address well I help them to do this get this better outcome by doing this this and this with my services and actually when you just break it down like that and like you say it's not about oh well I'm a highly qualified this or I have this credentials or I you know operate from this clinic or I do that you know that's not what you do what you do is help people with a problem reach a solution through a particular way of working and services and it really needs to be in those layman's terms doesn't it yeah 
yeah the jargon stuff and the I studied here and then I studied there and it's lovely and you you invested in it and it's important you, you're going to be great yeah. but that's not what your ideal client needs to hear. They need to hear how you're going to help them. Yeah, that's what they care about the most, yeah. Any other mistakes or is overcomplicating the overriding one? I think that's the that's the overriding yeah. theme really is, is overcomplicating it and, you know, staring at a blank page going, well, I've got to write this amazing thing when, again, it comes back to you're having a conversation and you're, you're speaking to your ideal client where they're at and and trying to help them so it, it's not that complicated I think sometimes I think you're right like people can psych themselves up into it and and even like I'm trying to write a book or I've got a couple of blogs I'm like oh you know that blank page thing and actually what you need to do is just write something like literally write anything down on that page even if it's I don't know what to write right now like get something <laughs> out and the ideas for me like then start popping into my head and I can particularly if you're doing it digitally you can kind of rearrange things oh yeah I do want to say that I'm going to put that down and and you can start moving things around then and suddenly that you don't have that blank page anymore. You've got something to work with, but don't turn it into this kind of big overblown process. Like just get something down and you'll always learn, won't you, from giving it a go and writing something rather than thinking about it and ended up writing nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what would you say then if someone is listening to this and they're going, yeah, yeah, all sounds great for you too, but you know, you two obviously enjoy writing and you like writing, you're good at writing and you know, you make money from writing. I'm not good at writing. Like I've never been good at writing. I didn't like it at school. You know, I've been criticized for it before. Like, what would you say to that person who's, who's quite afraid of writing or doesn't think they're good at it? What would be your, your tips for them? Firstly, you're not alone. Um, just about every client I've ever worked with has said to me, I'm no good at writing. Um, but this is something you and I have talked about before. And we have a chuckle about it because we weren't trained to write necessarily. Um, yes, went to um, university and did an English literature degree, but that doesn't actually my creative writing module. Um, I sucked at it. <laughs> And I've had blog posts that, as you know, even my mother didn't read. It, you know, there are going to be things that you put out there that will tank. Yeah. You just have to be prepared yeah. to keep going at it. it. It's 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 not magic. It's not mysticism. There's no secret source to it. It is genuinely about practice um, yeah. and taking that pressure off of yourself and keeping it simple. So the reality is you actually probably do tons of writing in your business. You send emails, you write to do lists. That's all writing. Yeah. Um, what you need to practice is having a written conversation with your ideal client. And some of what we've already talked about um, there are some tips in there for making that a bit easier for yourself. But my top tip is probably to print out your ideal clients um, with an image and about them. And I'm sure you've already done some stuff on that with your with your members um, and stick it above your workspace mm -hmm. and look at them every time. I'm looking because I'm looking at mine. Um, and look at them every time you write it, sit down mm -hmm. to write something and you're looking at what their challenges are, what their current struggles are, what, yeah. what they dream their life to be. And then you're writing to a person and that takes so much of the pressure off, makes it so much simpler. Um, and, you know, you don't have to be a trained professional to be able to copyright. It's, you know, you will, as you practice, you will evolve and get better at it. Yeah, I think we all have to be willing in so many different things in our businesses and particularly with writing to be not very good at things at the beginning. And I know you and I both came up through blogging and, and writing a lot that way. And like you said, like I used to, when I look back at some of the old blog posts, I was like, this is dreadful. Like, it's really <laughs> mistakes everywhere. Like it's got no point to it. Like all of that kind of stuff. But I think I did hear someone say, if you don't look back on things you did a year ago in your business and if it cringe a little bit, then you're not doing it right. You know, you're not pushing yourself out of your yeah. comfort zone a bit. You can't, it won't be perfect. You'll never write the perfect blog that is going to go viral and everyone's going to read and it's going to turn you into billions of customers. Like it just doesn't work like that. You have to just be willing to 
put something out there, give it a go, see what lands with people, see what conversations come from it, learn about the writing process, and then apply all of those learnings to to the next thing. Like we have to be willing to be not great at something, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we can't see your name. Do just pop it in the chat if you can't get the link working. This is a really good question. How long should copywriting text be? Like what 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 is your advice around the length of what we should be writing? That's an interesting question because it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string kind of question. Um it depends on what you're writing really. Um I think what's more important is that you are writing to your ideal client and to their needs and what their challenges are and making them feel really seen. Um, I'm not sure that you can necessarily put a length on that. Um, I think, you know, we have a tendency to kitchen sink it when we initially write stuff um, like a home page or whatever. And that's fine. Um, but you then need to obviously edit it down so that you are being really on point and really making sure that what you're putting in there is relevant for your ideal client. I don't, yeah. yeah I don't I think, think you can really say that anything should be a certain length because it will depend on your ideal, in, completely on your ideal client. Yeah, and the context of where you're writing, I suppose. Yeah. Like you said, so a home page you want it to be quite punchy and short and direct people around your website a sales page for something that's quite high price you want to really help them take them through that emotional journey so that they understand the value of what it is so you might need to write a few more words there a social media caption or an email I mean that can really vary can't it some people can write something that really pithy and gets to the core of the the problem in just a few sentences and other people write more I think again giving it a go and practicing and seeing will help you realize what what length works what what people do engage with and actually what you enjoy writing as well yeah definitely I love this um comment here as well Emma I'm not sure if that's you someone else saying I find writing blogs really helps me solidify my thoughts I agree it's a bit like journaling or processing things isn't it sometimes when you're writing blogs I know it was for me and still is and then it allows me to use it for Instagram and videos Yes, I am such a big preacher about repurposing. And that's why I love blogging, because if you write a really good blog, and again, if we're talking about length, you know, Google likes, a, you know, a good thousand words, it likes to know that you've really come, you know, studied the answer, and it's a good chance that you've answered it fully. But then that can turn into little captions, can't it for social media, or a little snippet you could put into an email, or, you know, could use it in so many different ways. So actually, writing or blogging is not something that's a waste of your time it's actually can be used in so many ways yeah and it comes back to that simplifying things piece and I love a bit of minimal marketing I don't I'm not here there and everywhere it, that that can be too much but when you're doing quality copywriting and you're writing for your ideal client and you're writing a great piece of content to help them goodness you get so much more out of it as well yeah absolutely that's a pleasure no problem thanks for answering that question great right Lee tell us a little bit about how you help our Just Start Now members then and what is the copy that you are most often helping them with and supporting with them them with tell, tell us a little bit more about how that all works um the one thing that I see the most of in the Just Start Now membership um, copywriting clinic is about pages. About me, yeah. Yep, it is about pages for the website. Um, these are, of course, really important for the website, um, but I think people feel extra uncomfortable. Mm. It feels icky for a lot of people because it feels like sort of inquisition spotlight shining on them and they get oh my god what am I supposed to write on this page and I say to them it's probably going to be your second most visited page because people are nosy and they want to know about you so there does feel that extra pressure if I need to say the right thing on this page if it's being visited the most after my home page absolutely so yeah but the thing that 
we say to the point of being annoying and we've already kind of touched on it on the on this is that the about page is not about you it's about them i your ideal clients i do write this on a really regular basis in the copywriting clinic i'm sorry if any of you are in here and you're going oh my god i can't hear that expression anymore <laughs> um but really it's about how you're the perfect person to help them um yeah. and i think the nice thing about that is that it takes some of the pressure off and it helps things flow better. Um, it's the case across the whole website, um, but particularly on the about page, which is that making that personal, more emotional connection with them and showing them, you know, the heart of you and what you do and how it's your mission to help them and how, um, what your ideal world would look like and how the work that you do has that ripple effect and how when they've worked with you, you know, they're going to go out into the world and it's all going to be lovely. Yeah. yeah. And I think using, I was going to say the word that we haven't touched on um, very much, that language, like using their language, making sure that we're picking those words that, they can relate to as well that that we're not yeah with that about me page it's not full of ego and I mean that in the kindest yeah. possible way that it isn't about us and our credentials it's about making that person feel really safe and at home and understood and and seen um and yeah like you you're saying with that about me page and I know with my training so what what members can do is use my structure I have a very clear structure of how to write an about me page and then they they give it a go and then they come and share it with you so that you can give them a few pointers on it as well is that it's actually about saying why you're passionate why it breaks your heart to see people like really struggle and and get stuck in these situations particularly with health practitioners we're often trying to help people not get in the same traps and the same stories and the same symptoms that we had for so long we want to stop that cycle so that that's really important to convey in a way that that connects with that audience yeah although it's funny because health of course is one of those words that we pick up on on a pretty regular basis in the clinic of okay but what does that actually mean you're not you're not talking about delivering people health you're talking about making them able to so that everyone. you can do what yeah. yeah yeah so i think that that's that's probably the most reoccurring thing in the in the clinic a piece of um yeah a piece of copy that people want want looking at as well and do you have a look at things like um sales pages and things like that as well I know like yep. we need to sort of convey and convince people on those pages where we're advertising our packages and our offers what tips do you often have to share on those pages I think the most frequent thing with sales pages is making your ideal client feel seen mm. and showing them that you see where they're at now and here's the transformation we're talking about the transformation an awful lot in clinic it's okay what what we tend to do is we tend to go here's what's included here's the price here are all the details yeah, which is thing yeah because we feel like that's what they're actually coming to the page for but they're not we we we, we, we start we come back to right no let's kick off with where are they now? Yeah. Where do they want to get to? How are you, like, what are you getting them to? That transformation. And I, again, probably drive everyone nuts with, what's the transformation? And when we say transformation, I know, unfortunately, that word has been co-opted, hasn't it, into like before and after photos of, oh, you, know, you know, weight loss and things like that. Like, like when we say transformation, we mean more in the wider sense. Like, mm -hmm. what is it? How do they want things to be instead? They, they have a problem or a situation that they're in right now and they don't want that. If that wasn't there, what would be there instead? How would things be? What would they be looking at? How would, you know, things work? And 
and and actually I think to be really specific like not to be afraid of being quite giving quite specific examples of what that could look like what you could potentially do and I'm always saying to people you know go specific say you could go for that run you know you could finally meet up with your friends without being terrified you could wear that dress that you want to wear or you could you know have the energy to run after your grandkids or you can go for that job that you wanted to get you know like don't be don't be afraid of being specific with it no, and and we see a lot of hesitancy around that being specific thing, and I think it's something we've talked about before. It's 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 not excluding people. It's absolutely resonating with your ideal clients, and, and that will speak to other people as well. Yeah, because I think people can then understand what it is you're saying rather than the kind of general, like you yeah. say, like health. I can make you feel healthier, okay? But what does that mean? And then when they can see a tan, like a more specific example, they go, "Oh, I can see how that would apply to me now, and what that would do and impact my life." Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. People don't want to eat healthier; they want no. to be glowing, and they want people to ask them what their secret is. Yeah. They want the result of eating healthier, and that's what yeah. we have to get good at articulating. And that is what you so brilliantly help us with thank you so much Lee this has been a pleasure as ever because I love talking about copywriting and I really hope even if you've been watching on the replay this has been helpful and informative in terms of good copywriting if you are interested in joining Just Start Now membership so Lee can help you on a fortnightly basis with what you're writing then do drop me a message or use the little link that I've put here as well to check out more about the membership and we will let Lee go and we will see if Louise is around to talk to us about tech but thank you so much for this morning Lee it's been been a pleasure thanks for having me it's great to see you take care bye bye Great. I hope that was useful. What I'm going to do now is ask very similar questions to the lovely Louise Maidment about tech and tech setup for your business. So um, let's get Louise up now. Good morning, Louise. How are you? Hi, hi, Vicky. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very good. I love your starry background. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this used to be my daughter's bedroom, which I did for her as a birthday surprise when she was about, I don't know, 10. And now, now she's 15. It's my room. So... <laughs> And I get lots of comments about the wallpaper, which, um, yeah, it's... Um, I also good. remember that. I'm decorating my daughter's bedroom then. May, may, maybe know that in 10 years' time it will turn into my office. And so I... Yeah, exactly. Like so go for what you really like, not what she likes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I was just explaining, as I did um, with Lee, obviously what we have inside the Just Start Now membership is access to sessions with you a few sessions each month that become available where our members can get one-to-one time with you to help with their tech setup and I just wondered if you could kick us off with what are the advantages of getting on top of our tech and actually like really nailing our setup and our automations and things what are the why why should we be looking at it and focusing on it I think there's two main advantages the first is that it makes your life a lot easier because running the business is easier it's let there's less input those manual repetitive tasks go um, um and also it makes it more fun because you kind of have cracked it and it, it may be that you need help to do that you know it depends if you want to learn it yourself or get help but whichever what approach you take you know if you can kind of crack it to the point that you need um and not go over the top with it um you, yeah, it makes it more fun and, and, and easier from your own perspective. And then flipping it around from your client's perspective, um, you you get to kind of wow them, but only you know, simply with with the processes you use and um, the onboarding experience they have, or what, whatever it may be. Like particularly, um, I'm a great um, proponent of Dubsado, which I've used for a long time now, and help clients get that organised and. It, you know, the moment that that kicks into action, and people book a call or how, whatever it is, whether they fill out a form on your website, people are like, "Oh wow, I love, I love your, you know, the setup and the the reminders that you that they automatically get, and they just feel like they're in a, in a place where there is this kind of slick process." So, um, yeah, I think it's just this two sided thing. It's got tech has got to make your own life easier, not a hassle, not kind of a scary thing, but also there is a point to it, which is obviously it's central to an online business, and when we're running essentially service-based businesses then you know the client side of it is also key as well 
Yeah. And I just love that you use those words fun and easy because quite often we were talking with Lee actually as well about the common mistake is overcomplicating things and approaching things and thinking, oh, this is really hard or I'm not good at it or this is really difficult or I'm never going to get this to work and all those kind of mentalities. And actually, I'm always trying to say to people, okay, how can we make it more fun? How can we make it more easy? How can we make it more enjoyable? How can we simplify it? Yeah. And actually, that is what tech can do for you so that you enjoy doing your business and you feel confident onboarding clients rather than actually what I find some people go is actually I don't actually want anyone to sign up with me because I think it's all a bit of a mess when they do and I, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen get that moment of like yeah and then it's like oh yeah. god I've got oh, to do god. a contract and I've yeah, got to go into yeah. word and all that you know and it's that hassle it's the boring bit but as exciting yeah. as it is and you want yeah you do almost sort of put it off because you've got to sort of like yeah go and do that thing but yeah. um yeah no I totally agree and I think people can lose sight of of wanting to simplify and make that running their business fun because they see tech as this big block this big obstacle which they you know, so many people say to me I'm rubbish with tech I mean that's that's what I hear more often than not and yeah. it, you you can't sadly you when you're having an online business you have to you have to have tech in some form. It doesn't mean to say you have to have the most complicated setup, but you can't get away from it. You know, we, we, whether it's just an Instagram based business, you are using tech, even if it's just Instagram, which I would never recommend. But um, <laughs> I know you would agree. Um, so you you have to get over that one way or another um, and accept that even if you feel like you're rubbish at tech, you've got to you've got to t you know, take steps to change that, basically. I think. So much of my work is about helping people. I'm showing people the, the language that they're using. And often I say, OK, can, can we just stop saying I'm really rubbish at using tech and change up that language? Like I'm learning all the time. I'm getting better all the time. I'm bringing systems that help my business. You know, just changing the language and the thought process that is going on yeah. in our heads and coming out of our minds. Because what we say and what we think is then what happens and what what our reality is and, and I'm not saying magically by saying I'm brilliant at using tech all the time that suddenly it'd be easy but I think we need to catch that language where we're actually undermining and sabotaging ourselves before we've even yeah. given it a go yeah and it's I mean it's easy for me to say because obviously tech is my business but you know if you are a yoga instructor or a nutritionist that is your zone of genius so yeah you didn't come into this to be like oh I can't wait to do all the tech stuff that's not that's we're never going to be like that yeah. but it's yeah it's accepting that it is part and parcel and a very central part of running an online business yeah. and then thinking okay how am I going to make this as easy as possible and um and I think just being prepared to yeah to learn or to either you know if you've got two choices you either learn to do it yourself or you get someone to do it for you um and it, really it's as simple as that and yeah. um yeah the sooner you kind of get into the zone and, and actually, you know, make that decision and say, right, okay, you know, it's not my favorite thing, but I'm going to do what I need to do, then the better really. Yeah. And yeah, and I do, yeah, I do think knowing that once it's done, I often find it's then something you can repeat quite easily or, you know, you understand how to do it. it, it I often find it's the initial bit where yeah. it's, it's a bit painful and a bit difficult, but I just think, do you know what? It's going to be so worth me putting the time and energy in now because this is going to make my life so much easier on, on the long term rather than. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and often it's not as bad as you think. I think, no. I mean, certainly you can make bad choices. Like the amount of people that are like, oh, yes, I use Active Campaign. And I'm like, why? Um, or MailChimp. And I'm like, right, we need to get onto MailerLite. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you can give yourself this horrendous time by having made the wrong choice because somebody said, oh, yeah, you've got to use this thing. Um, yeah. But actually, if you can, you know, get the right setup in place, then it's, you know, you want it to be the kind of optimum, but the simplest, the simplest setup so that it does, you know, even if you are a I'm rubbish with tech person, you can think, actually, this is OK. This isn't brain surgery. You know, I can get my head around this. It just takes a bit of doing. Yeah. And ultimately, I'm always saying there's no right or wrong decision with it. Like, OK, if you went with a particular piece of software and it's just not working for you, you can change. You can move. Yeah. You know, I, I help people get their website set up or the mailing list as well and things like that. You're like, OK, if it's really not working, you can move it. it you're not stuck with it forever. Like you 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 can move. You can change. Things can improve. Yeah. Yeah. So no, what other than the language then and, and saying all the time that we're not great at doing it, what are the typical mistakes that you find people are making then when it comes to setting up their tech, setting up automations in their business? I think 
definitely overcomplicating it. And I think a lot of that does come out of people. Um, you know what it's like if you go into any Facebook group and someone's asked, oh, what should I use for my email marketing? Now, I know, obviously, in your group, it's, you know, MailerLite is it's something that you push. And I totally agree. You know, we're both, we know our MailerLite very well. So I'm with you on that 100%. But if you go into any group and someone says, what should I use? There'll be 12 different suggestions and then 50 different views as to whether it's good or bad or, you know, somewhere in the middle. And actually, it doesn't help at all. So you can overwhelm yourself with that. You can overcomplicate it because you pick, yeah, the wrong thing or something that is just too more than you need. Like as I, I mentioned, Active Campaign, and yeah, it's amazing. But for the vast majority of us, we simply don't need what that can do. Yeah. Um, and what you end up doing is paying for something you don't need. So then you sort of feel guilty because you're not using it properly, and but you still don't understand it because it's not very user friendly at the best of times and the whole thing becomes this vicious circle which you just don't want to use it or don't want to do anything with it mm. um so yeah don't over kind of spec yourself don't overdo it with your choice um of of tech um and there is you know there's always if i think of email marketing you've got this whole array you've got you know mailer light which obviously is free for to start off with then you've got something like flowdesk which is paid but it's it's just lovely and easy to use and kind of a joy to use going up to the kind of more, I don't know, convert kit perhaps, or then and then right up to the active campaigns of this world. You know, there is, for, for every choice you make, there is a kind of range of options. And I, I'm not saying look at 10 different ones, but, you know, if if you really want to do it for free, well, and I'm all for bootstrapping in terms of tech setup, yeah. then make that your priority. Or if you want to spend a little bit or you want it to be really aesthetically pleasing and that's your priority, well, then that should be the thing that guides you. So, yeah. Um, you know, just go into it with your eyes open, but just don't over complicate things. Definitely. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And I'm with you on the I know when people are getting started, you're not flush with funds um, and seeing whole loads of, ex, you know, recommendations of very expensive products, you know, can feel like quite a lot of pressure. That's why I do always recommend things like MailerLite or like I love a Squarespace website because it's very user friendly to, to yeah. use and things like that. Like you don't have to bankrupt yourself or do. And I have to say, I fell for the whole convert kit thing at one point and tried it and was just like I don't need all of these things I don't I don't I, I can yeah. see how powerful it is a t as a tool but I have a mailing list of about 300 400 people you know I just need to send emails to them and have a couple of automation set up you know I don't need something that's costing me 40 50 quid a month yeah to, yeah. to do all those things so don't like I agree with you and, and like we said you can always level it up you can always add things on you can always transfer it but like start with the, the basics of, of what you need yeah. and also there is this tendency with mailer like for people to suggest again in these kind of Facebook group scenarios oh yeah it's great mailer like great as a starter you know if you're just getting started actually MailerLite is great if you're not just getting started I mean yeah. it's great full stop it's basically the same as convert kit there obviously are differences but you're saying about all the things you didn't need in ConvertKit, but the thing you did need was a, as a decent email, you know, editor to actually produce yeah. the emails. Yeah. It's a lot harder to produce an attractive email in ConvertKit, Convert -Kit than it is in it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. I was, I think because their philosophy is different, that they think you don't yeah. need it to look a certain way. And I was just like, actually, and you're right. I in right now with both of my decisions with Squarespace and MailerLite, I have no intention of leaving either of them because they both do what I need them to do. I don't need them to do any more right now in yeah. my business. And I know there is a lot of that, you know, choose the thing that will grow with your business. But some of us haven't even got one client yet or sold one product yet. Or, so, you know, we're really yeah. getting beginning. So let's let's learn and get confident with it we, before we, you know, need to invest in all those things and have huge overheads in our business, which just aren't necessary. I'm loving this comment. Thank you so much, Serena. Um, both of your help in the membership has made business set up so much more straightforward for me, which is what we both really want, isn't it, Louise? I was Absolutely. all over the place before, um, it, as you mentioned, too many options, getting overwhelmed, honestly, forever grateful for the group. That's brilliant. Oh, I had a call with Serena yesterday. So we, yeah, we did some Squarespace stuff. Um, right. yesterday and it's sometimes it's like for her she did, she's got an amazing website but it was just a case of she's just stuck with those little niggly things which you can yeah. spend ages trying to google yeah. and we just got them sorted so it's those little things which are yeah can be really helpful great I'm so glad so what are your biggest tips then if you are thinking I'm not a very techie person we've already said like try to stop saying that to yourself initially <laughs> but what are you, what is your biggest tech tip for people well, I think when you have that attitude, you then kind of you get yourself stuck, don't you? You, you know, you 
you put this sort of brick wall up in front of you when it comes to tech. And because, as we said, you, you really have got to embrace it. So, yeah, try to embrace it, try to flip it on its head and say, right, OK, I'm going to crack this. And then and then do make a decision. Like, are you going to learn it yourself? So that is a case of, you know, reading blog posts and, look, you know, in your membership and, and looking at guidance in there and all of those kind of um resources are you going to get some one-to-one help you know go down that road or if depending on you know if you are just too busy and you're just because some people in fairness have got no interest in it they accept that it is a necessary part of their business but they do not want to do it themselves and they also haven't got the time so in that scenario that's where you would consider outsourcing and I think you've got to make a decision like you've got those three ways what what are you going to do and put the wheels in motion and just get started with it and one step at a time, you know, you, yes, you could you can set up your email marketing before your website, but soon enough, you'll want to have a website. So I would say always prioritize your website and your email marketing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and and do that. Just just focus on one step at a time and and get going with it. Yeah, I think the one step at a time thing is so important because, again, like the more you read or the more that you see that other people have got, you, the more you think, oh, gosh, there's just so much to do. And then we end up in that like paralysis of like, and now I'm not going to do any of it at all. And I have to always say to people, I've been helping people through my group course as well. And it's sort of saying, oh, I, you know, I'll, I'll come on to that or it all feels a bit overwhelming. I don't know where to start. Like, just start with one thing. Like you said, like I would go website, just get, you know, basic pages and about me pages you know your offer together a home page you know just focus on doing that break it down spend little blocks of time or like you say if you have no interest in doing it at all then actually your job is go and get some quotes yeah. or you know go and yeah. do some research of whose website does look nice and do you have any recommendations and things and then make that your priority for getting that done rather than yeah just paralyzing yourself with there's so much to do so therefore I'll end up doing nothing and mindlessly yeah. Through cat videos on Instagram instead. <laughs> yes, exactly. Doesn't help well, anybody. Absolutely. And I think as well, and I know like in your membership, you're you're really clear in helping people through all these steps, but it's so easy to be completely overwhelmed by what other people are doing. And yes. you you might catch a sort of, you know, the sort of in phrase about whether it's funnels or something. And then you go go down that road and you're like, I've got to have this amazing funnel and I need to have this amazing software that's going to make that happen. And and actually no, you don't like you just you, you have got a funnel because you're funneling people to your website and onto your email list. That is a funnel. But it's just appreciating that and realizing that you don't have to have all the bells and whistles in order to make that happen. Um no, and I, I had just, otherwise you just spent so much time worrying about or trying to learn all these things that you don't need and then you don't yeah. get anything done. I had a, I did a discovery call with a lady once who who said exactly that. She's like, I have, you know, my dream nutrition business in my mind. I know what I want to do. And then I met this guy one day. I can't even remember where she said she met him. And suddenly he was, you need funnels. I've got this guy in Africa. He can set it up for you. He'll do this. He will funnel you into that. He will cost you this. It will send these many emails. And she, it was horrifying. It was like, oh my God, like, is that what I have to do to have the business I want? no yes you, know, yeah. you can set the tech up you can set the, the the way you communicate with people automatically your your onboarding process like you're in control of all of that you don't there's no should there's no have to there's no only one way yeah. of making money and doing these things and and using technology yeah. and a lot of that kind of you know high powered funnel type advice does come from the, some of the big big names in the states where you know the way business is there is very different and They've got, you know, multiple high ticket offers and all of that kind of stuff, which is like, yeah, great. OK. And you've got, you know, 25,000 people on your email list minimum. And yeah. it's a different world. It's completely different. Um, and I think you have to just separate yourself from that. and like, OK, well, maybe one day, <laughs> but not yeah. now. And um, just do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. When we have smaller businesses we are the person on the other end you know if you buy something it's us delivering it yeah um, we I I find it is using technology to enable me to have a more personalized approach the amount of people that need you know hand holding through decisions or you know little voice notes or you know conversations and things so I use the technology to nurture those conversations and enable me to keep up with them rather than using it to, like you say in a kind of big American style like funneling people all automated I'm sat on my beach having a margarita while mm -hmm. you know I'm making bu bundles of money which just isn't a doesn't doesn't happen like you, you there's no yeah. such thing as a completely passive business where you don't do anything at all um and b actually isn't what most of us want you know we want to be connected to our customers we want to be using the technology to just enable us a bit more yeah 
Yeah. And also that kind of approach can make you feel, we're going slightly off the tech thing now, but can make you feel like because you're doing a service based business effectively that you, you're kind of somehow doing it wrong because you haven't seen the light and produced, you know, your course and all of these amazing funnels that mean you can sit on the beach and do nothing. Um, and actually, if you, you know, like I, I enjoy being a service based business. It's what I do best. So that's OK. I'm happy to be working however many hours a week and it's yeah. what else would I do I haven't got a beach to go and sit on so <laughs> well I do <laughs> but in the school run very well either <laughs> no, the weather is terrible so I, you know I wouldn't spend that much time on it and actually you're <laughs> right. like the thing that lights me up actually I've got two friends I'm business you know owner friends as well and we were saying the time when we're worrying the least is when we're in our zone when we're when we're coaching when we're working with people you know when we're when we're busy and we're helping people that is what I want to do that and I yeah. when the tech enables me to do that and to do that efficiently and communicate and connect with people and help people then you know it's it's all coming together I'm loving this comment I'm not sure who it is you're gonna have to just pop in your name um echoing what Serena has said I felt so lost when I first started I wasted so much time just not really knowing what I should be doing the membership has given me much more structure made it much more manageable and given me more confidence Vicky Louise and Lee's help and support along with other members has been invaluable yes it's all about knowing your purpose agreed Serena and that is where I always help the members you know why are we doing this like we've just said like if we what we don't want a life I mean, occasionally we can sit on a beach with a margarita, but, you know, not just not yeah. all year. A couple like, of weeks what, a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But but that's it. Like, how am I, what life am I creating for myself? And how yeah. do I want my week to look? How do I want to be running my business? How do I want to communicate and stay in touch yeah. with my clients? Like, yeah. and then use the technology, harness that technology to create that life that you deserve and yeah. you can have. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to want to work hard and, you know, there's definitely that feeling that if, if you are prepared to sit at your desk for six hours a day, you are doing something wrong. And it's like, no, just no. But by And actually, you can do more of the actual work that's bringing the money in when you've got the tech set up properly, because that's doing its thing in the background. Yes. Um, and that's what I'm always saying with the, you know, what we talk about with MailerLite. And initially, you were helping just be with their mailing list is those automations. I say they're selling to people while you sleep. You know, if you're, you're worried, you're not selling enough. If people sign up to your mailing list, and you've got a little automation, and it's it's upselling them and building that, you know, relationship with them and offering them something, you know, that is great. That's doing doing work for you. Whilst yeah. you stay in your zone of genius and do something else with those six hours or four hours or one hour a day or whatever it is that you're working to. That was Rose yeah. saying that. Rose, I'm really really mm -hmm. glad. Um, but, um, Louise, would you? Sorry, oh, I was just going to say. And when you feel like you're lost in this kind of like you're buried under all this tech setup, you have to remember that for the most part it is set up. So it's kind of once and done. You just need to get it set up in the first place and let it do its thing yeah. so there is light at the end of the tunnel you don't yeah. have to do this every single day unless you're me and you do it for, for a living <laughs> no but I, I totally agree and I do I always joke and say quite a lot of my clients do initially want to throw their laptops at me when you know getting it set up but once it's set up they, they go oh this is great because I can just repeat that or duplicate that or use that for this purpose some of yeah. my clients have got so into it they've taught me things about the functionality for it. <laughs> they they do enjoy doing it so yeah it's so so powerful would you just tell us what is it you help people with most or in the inside the membership like what kind of things are you helping people with and what what do you quite frequently see people need help with so I think what I often see and obviously as you as of course you know that I've been doing a lot of the email marketing focus calls um in the last few months um it's that feeling of they've got it all set up and they and then they have this panic of like well what do I do with it now like you know it's kind of a tick box exercise to say yeah it made it like set up and I've got my yeah. form and then so a lot of those calls were, were um about yeah what do I do am I doing it right in inverted commas um and so that is is something that comes up a lot and it's it's that feeling of like but I don't want to bother people um specifically mm -hmm. on the email marketing front and sort of saying well they, they signed up for a reason they want to hear from you so a lot of it kind of although I'm you know tech is is my focus a lot of it was is the kind of mindset behind email marketing in particular it's like you can do it go for it a lot of it, you just need to give yourself the inspiration and have your ideas about what you're going to send so that you never sort of dry up because that's the worst thing isn't it with emails it's like oh god I meant to be sending it in an hour and I haven't written what do I say? yeah so there's that and then also kind of the automation side and and setting them up in a way which is not super super complicated sometimes I see them and 
you know, in MailerLite or whatever other software you might use, you've got the the thing, you know, conditional logic with, with the yes no branches in in the automation workflow. And I always say to clients, look, if you want to use that, then do. But that makes my brain hurt when yeah. you have to try and work out. Okay, what's it's like one simple thing? little line? Yeah, do that. Like three yeah. steps is perfect. Let's not yeah. overdo this. And yeah. and also, you don't have to have every single thing in one automation. Have it have different ones and then yeah. join them up. And because then if you change one, it's not impacting the whole thing. So, again, it's it's it all comes down really to to simplifying it, keeping it as simple as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that is the critical thing. I think like we talked about with these tools, they are incredible and really powerful. But actually, we've always got to keep it. I suppose we're going back right back to what you said at the beginning. How do we make this easier? How do we make this simpler? You know, what, what's the one thing that this needs to do? Not the oh, this has got 15 different tools I didn't even know I could use. So now, now I'm going to use all of these shiny yeah. things. And yeah. then we get completely waylaid and distracted and away from what we're really meant to be doing, which is going out, selling and promoting, you know, talking about what we're doing, knowing that the tech is there, just doing its thing as simply and easily as possible. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, just because there are bells and whistles, you don't need to no. use them all. <laughs> Not at the same time anyway. No, exactly. They're there to add on if you need them later. But I just think the basics, usually people haven't even got the basics set up, which is why I think it's brilliant that we have you in the membership and what I try and share as well in the pre-recorded training to say like let's just get these basics so let's just get you know automation you know delivering a freebie or a lead magnet delivering a little nurture sequence communicating and scheduling some content yeah. for you those things then you know once you're on top of all of those then you've got more headspace to do all the other stuff and creative yeah. fun stuff in our businesses that we want to yeah. do yeah and once you've made the decision about how you're going to do it and, and you've got it set up you do feel that sort of the weight lifting that that it's done because a lot of I think the headspace with all of these things is is the indecision and the you know should I use this should I use that do I need this thing and once you kind of rule something in or out then you can just get on with it so it's yeah it makes life just yeah easier and more fun definitely good Thank you so much, Louise. This has been great to talk to you. Great for people to hear from you, get those little tips on tech and the thought processes often that it is that go on behind it. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you back in the membership at some point. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. It's been great to be here. Brilliant. Thank you. Great. I hope this has been helpful, guys. If you are watching on the replay, give me a hashtag replay. Let us know any other questions or anything else that has come up for you. And if you are interested in joining the membership, being able to tap into people like Lee, like Louise, like me, we have guest speakers come in each month as well um, to talk to you about topics that you need. Sarah's just saying thank you. That's an absolute pleasure, Sarah. Thank you for joining. Um, just let me know. Use the little link. Um, uh, to check out more about the membership or just drop me a little direct message or an email if you have any questions about whether it's right for you because uh, these two things are just so so important and I think how interesting that both the common themes for both of them was don't overcomplicate it you know simplicity and don't overwhelm and don't overcomplicate it um, you know strip it right back to basics so thank you so much for joining I will leave this replay in here if you ever need to come back and have a look or you can tag a friend or someone else that you think would find it really helpful and useful and I will see you guys in here again very soon see you bye